Today we're going to talk about the seven things we absolutely hate about our little guy Max. And then we're going to touch on how we address those or how Extreme Outdoors has addressed those issues. But before we do, I wanted to remind you, don't forget to check out our video that we did last week, Everything You Need to Know About Wet Baths. Relevant, relatable, and reliable information from full-time RVers. One of the first things we discovered right away that we did not like about the Little Guy Max was the screens. These screens. Now these are not just specific to Little Guy. For some reason they are prolific through the RV industry right now. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has, I have not met one person that likes them. Yeah, so you'll find them on a lot of different models. They look cool and when you first get them you think that's a very cool idea. Because you can pull down and you have this accordion style screen and I'll need your help. And you can pull up and you have your shades. However, you have these little holes that are drilled in so the string can get through there. That lets in those little no like nobody's business. And on the ends, there's a gap with the accordion. So bugs will always come in Yeah, and they pop out very easily. So you can see right here, if you have a dog or a cat or something, all they've got to do is barely touch. See that we're popped out. Carrie, could you go ahead and fix that for us? Um, so yeah, that is a chink in the armor there. Um, again, I would change this very quickly if I could. That's one of the first things I would do if I could change anything about this rig. It would be those. Mm-hmm. Now the next thing on our list is the cabinetry hardware. The stuff that keeps the cabinets closed or supposed to keep them closed. Mm -hmm. We've had continual uh, issues with these and we've had more than one occasion where we've driven and then come back inside and had everything all over the floor. Yeah, I remember one time we had like cinnamon and stuff all over the floor. It took forever to clean that up. So Carrie, what's next on our list? The table. <laughs> yeah. Man, that thing was poorly designed. It was a very large, bulky table uh, that was in place when we first got in. Mm -hmm. And I usually sit where you're sitting right now. Yep. And getting in and out is very problematic unless you are a toothpick. Yeah, we've broken this trim piece right here, just trying to slide in and out. Now you can tell right here, this is not the table. We're going to discuss that, how we fix that later on. Now, another thing that I know just drives you crazy when you're cooking, because you do all of the cooking, unless it's a grill, unless it's grilling outside, is the lack of outlets in the kitchen area. In the kitchen area, because there are a lot of outlets in this rig, mm -hmm. but where I need it most, I don't have it. And where I, they do have it, it's right next to the sink. Yeah. And I use it in Instant Pot a lot. We use a toaster oven, and both of those have very short cords. Mm -hmm. I have to put them on the sink, on the cutting board for the sink, and plug it in. So I have no access to the sink whatsoever or, while I'm cooking. Yeah, or if you use water, boy, that could be dangerous because you're right there. You've got the plug-in right by the faucet. Um, I've even seen you put your Instant Pot on the floor. I've had a few people ask me before, why didn't you just cook with it on the table? This is a small space. We're both in here. This is also Russ's office. Yeah, nine so, times out of 10 when she's cooking, I'm working. Now, I know one thing that drives you crazy, that gray tank valve pull. Yeah, you know what? I'm not really even old and that's really difficult because in- un <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> Unlike the, uh, the pull on the black tank, which comes straight out, this goes at an angle. So you've got to reach under and it's, it's up high. So you're kind of, it's a weird it's angle. It's set in about a good foot. Yeah, you've inches. really got to reach in and try to pull it out. And if it sticks at all, it's like ours is doing right now, man, it's it's extremely difficult. I can't stand that about it. I have to get on my hands and knees to pull that thing. And, and I, I've tried it a few times um, as well. And yes, just pulling it out yeah. that way just is a very awkward angle to try to get that leverage. So it's a sideways pull going that way versus going straight so out like the black tank. Out. Yeah. Now this is another thing that I know drove you crazy, that cowling in front that covers the propane. Yeah, it's just a flimsy plastic piece that goes over there. Um, that is, ours was put on sideways. Now that doesn't come from the manufacturer. Yeah. The cowling is put on by the dealer, uh, but still ours was put on uh, a little crooked and then it was also not even completely riveted on. There was only two points when there's actually three points on each or two points on each side to it 
for it to be connected, it was only connected by two points. So two other points weren't even connected. Well, not too long ago, we stopped at a rest stop and it was nearly off. Yeah, it was not connected at all. It was just bouncing around. We had around. to use like zip ties <laughs> in order to hold it. Now the last one that we're going to cover is the design of the windows on the door and the window right behind me. Yeah, they're set in a position that if that door flies open because of wind, we've had it happen twice. One time it broke, this last time it cracked it. Um, that door is just gonna flip open. The two windows are kind of bubbled out. Mm -hmm. They slam together and one of them breaks or, or cracks. Now, the good thing is, is that the little guy Max has double pane windows. So even though we broke ours the first time, it wasn't like there was a bunch of air coming in. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even though I broke it the first time, and even though I cracked it the second time, uh, it didn't allow any air in, any cold air in or warm air out. So that was but a good thing. But it didn't look very good. No. Now we're going to talk about how we or Extreme Outdoors has addressed these issues. The first one is being the screen. And to be honest, the screens, it is what it is. I don't think they're addressing it. We don't know of a way to address it. No, I have seen some people get pretty clever and create their own little netting mm. bits that go around every window with a little drawstring. But at this point, you shouldn't have to do that. This Not when function. you've got a forty thousand dollar rig. No. You know, I mean, for to people that have to go sew their own little window socks up, it's kind of ridiculous. But again, it's not just a little guy max. You see this on a oh. lot of different manufacturers. Now, how about the cabinet hardware? We had to get creative with that. We installed childproof locks on all the cabinets that we could. And then I go through my bungee spider web routine every time we hit the road, whenever we move, just to make sure that things don't come out. Yeah. Now, as I alluded to before, and you can see we fixed this, is the table in here was horrible. Just a little bit. Yeah. We threw it out. I couldn't think of a way to make that table work. Yep. So we threw it out. We installed the lagoon mount. And we bought our own tabletop, and you can get whatever type that you would like, and this has worked out perfect. Exactly. So now this can rotate and move back and forth. So we can rotate it all the way over there. I can walk out sideways, walk in, um, side, you know, whatever way I want. Same thing with Carrie. We this is just so much better for us. Kitchen outlets. Now this is somewhere where the manufacturer listened to the people when their model first came out. Ours is a 2018, first year of the model. People talked about that that electric plug issue. Mm -hmm. They now installed one, they've corrected it and they put extra outlets along the other side of the wall by the pantry. Yep. I wish I had that. They but, did that right away. Yes. That was in 2019, they fixed that. Right away. Yep. So even though we're dealing with that issue, uh, they took care of it. They better have. <laughs> <laughs> now. When it comes to the gray tank valve lever placement. Say that three times back. <laughs> yeah, I barely got it out one time. It is what it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, little guy or extreme outdoors, it's the same way it is in the 2021 versus the 2018 that we have. And uh, really, man, you just got to get on your knees and, and pull. <laughs> That's what I angle. have to do. Yeah, yeah. Now the cowling. Extreme outdoors listen to this one again yeah yeah so they made a it's an option mm -hmm. but you can get a nice diamond plate like the front of the rig uh metal gas can cover or cowling what carrie and i are calling cowling uh i would prefer that i would like to do that it with our nice. little guy max it looks nice it's a lot sturdier but uh what carrie and i did was we were forced to go in and re-drill holes in the tongue or in the frame area so we could put our cowling back on the correct way. And I just used some washers and I used some screws and drilled it in and now it works and holds well. So if you are purchasing one that still has the plastic cowling, yeah. double check it when you pick it up from the dealer. And I would say definitely spring on that option. Oh yes. You can buy it from, I, I think you could have Extreme Outdoors send one in. If not, they make some aftermarket ones that'll work just fine too. I would do that in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And I call this the Russ solution. Extreme Outdoors fixed the door window breaking solution. 
I think they were tri- tired of Russ calling back up saying <laughs> hey. he broke another one. <laughs> hey, I can't hold on to the door when it's windy, apparently. And how did they fix that? They came up with a new system. Uh, well, they put a new system on the uh, door hinges. It's called a friction hinge. Or the Russ hinge. Yeah, the Russ hinge. <laughs> It'll stop it from swinging all the way open. Uh, we have contacted Little or Extreme Outdoors. We we're thinking about ordering that as well because, yeah, it's going to happen again. Even when you're aware that it is really windy out there, you step outside, and unless you're Superman, I mean, I'm close, but uh, can you can't hold you on su- to that door. It can catch you by surprise sometimes. Yeah. But from. She didn't even catch. I said, unless you're Superman, I'm close. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm so used to him doing uh-huh. that. But no, from what I understand, it's a very simple replacement. So if you do have a 2018 model, and I'm not sure exactly when they made the switch out to the friction hinge, Mm -hmm. but if you don't have it, you can order the friction hinges. And I, from what I understand, it's a very easy swap out. Here's an easy way to tell if you have the friction hinges or not. If that door's ever been ripped out of your hands and bounced up against the window, you don't have the friction hinges and you should look into it. Now, with all that being said, we love our little Guy Max. There are no perfect RVs. Every RV is going to have something wrong. Well, this video is a tool for you, the new buyer. Something for you to consider. For example, that valve. Mm -hmm. If somebody has a tough uh, time with range of motion, you might have to consider a rig that gives you better access. So walk around those rigs and really get to know them. We're just kind of highlighting some of these things you might not think about as you're walking in one after another after another. All right, so you stuck around. Thank you so much for doing that. And because you did, we've got a bonus clip for you. Yeah, we do. What's up? What's up, buddy? Yeah, I know you're hungry.